I have encountered fans of all ages who love the Little House series. You know when you read something or see something that rings true, essential human honesty and decency is palpable. And I, I figured a couple of days off, do a little fishing too at the same time. Be ready to leave at six o'clock Saturday morning. You mean you, you don't mind? Glad to have you along. It's really nice to know that something you've been a part of has had such an impact on so many people's lives and so many literally generations of, of people. All of us who produced it, wrote it, who cast it, who had anything to do with the show, we're proud of that show more than anything. Falling in love is such a waste of time. I'm going to stay right here with Pa forever and ever. Everywhere I go, when people come up to me to talk about Little House on the Prairie, they're telling me that they're watching it with their grandchildren, and they just bought the DVDs for their great niece's children. It is such a privilege to be part of a legacy like that. From the time of its premiere in 1974, through nine seasons, 205 episodes, and three TV movies, Little House on the Prairie was an audience favorite, rarely falling outside the Nielsen Top 20. So the news of its cancellation in 1983 took the cast and crew by surprise. Victor French called me and he said, so I'm going to do, I think it was Mike Douglas or Merv Griffin or one of those talk shows to, to talk about and protest the cancellation. Do you want to come on with me? And I said, cancellation of what? And he said, of our show. So I immediately called Michael's office and said, you know, what do you know? And he said, well, I don't know anything because they haven't told me that the show is canceled. We're just not on the fall schedule. They didn't really get warning. It was like, surprise, that's it. We're not doing it next year. You know, I was, I thought I was ready. I thought, you know, I'm ready to have my own life now. I'm ready to fly. I've, done, I've got my own production company. I've got a couple of movies under my belt. I've got an Emmy as a producer. I have a boyfriend. I have things that I want to do. I don't really feel like strapping the boots on anymore. I'm ready to go until they told me that the show was over. And my first reaction was, I want to leave. How am I... How am I... I can have a hard time saying goodbye to these people when we would go on hiatus. How am I going to say goodbye? to this entire crew of people that raised me from the age of nine. When the series ended, it was probably the saddest day anybody experienced. We all had been together for so many years. We all were such a close family. And so when it was dwindling down to its last days, we dreaded the day. For the last farewell, the producers not only had to tie up storylines for the show's characters, but also fulfill one legal requirement with the location that had been Little House's home for nine years. Our deal was with the property in Simi Valley that we had to put it back to its natural state. They're figuring they have to bulldoze the buildings, they have to get rid of it all. And Michael said, hang on a minute. And he went away and came back in about an hour. And he says, I'll write a show that the railroad are coming through and they're going to buy up everything at Walnut Grove. And Mike got the idea that, well, we'll OK, we'll give them. They want the land. We'll give them the land. And the residents of Walnut Grove decide that they're not going to be owned by anybody. And if they can't have the town, nobody's going to have the town. And so the decision is made to blow it up and walk away singing Onward Christian Soldiers. We never blow up a little house, and you never blow up a church. It was uh, a real way of having closure for us to, to say, this is it. Uh, there's no more coming back from this. We are done. And it was also Michael's way of saying, nobody else is shooting on our sets. You're not coming in here to shoot the next Western that comes down the pike because you can rent the space. It's going. He said, they can film other shows on the sets. They could, they could make something obscene. They could make a horror movie. He said, I can't pay for everyone's therapy. And I was the, one, the second one to set it all. Mike first, me, and then Kent.
when we saw each thing blow up, when we saw these sets that we've lived with for years, you have no words for that. It was so shocking. I, I, I remember, I mean, instantly just bursting into tears. It was gone. When they blew up the mill in that area, I was standing there on the bridge, and I started to cry. Mike came over and he said, uh, it's OK. And I said, no, it's not. We've lost something here, and we'll never get it back. We'd be going along just fine, and then someone would start to cry, and then we'd all start to cry. But we all got a chance to have closure. And we all had a chance to say goodbye to that world and to each other, and to have our individual private moments with one another. It was an acknowledgment of all that we had done together all those years. Melissa Gilbert came to sit down next to Mike, and she was crying. Michael and I were left alone, and um, I was crying. And he held me, and he said, um, he said, don't cry. He said, don't cry, because for you, this is just the beginning, and I know it. It's just the beginning. And um, <laughs> he was right. on the prairie left television with a bang that has continued to echo down the years. Though it was never a critical favorite, the show's popularity with audiences has only grown over time. It was a spring dance. May, I think. You brought me cornflowers from the meadow and I put them in my hair. <laughs> I fell in love with him that moment. There is sort of a weird double standard of what Hollywood thinks is cool and Hollywood likes and applauds and writes articles about and gives Emmys to and what everybody else on the planet is watching. There were many, many shows in the 70s who were greatly acclaimed and the critics adored them and they won all the awards and everyone made a big fuss, but they're not getting fan mail from South Africa and China now. Their DVDs aren't coming out on Blu-ray, and they're not having a cast reunion in the south of France. I hear from people all the time talking about, there is nothing like that on television today. There's nothing that I want to watch with my kids. It's awful. I would give anything to have Little House on the Prairie back. It's like there's the industry shows and the people shows. And Little House on the Prairie was, has been, and shall be the people show. Do you remember how we used to fight? I sure do. I wonder if you can still beat me up. I don't know. Want to fight? Yeah. <laughs> First, I want to see the baby. OK, come on. Of course, there were a lot of people then that watched the show, when I was growing up and watching the show. But because it got syndicated, and then it's been on all these other stations, you've got new generations of fans that have been brought up on Little House. There are people today who were teenagers and younger back in 1974, 75, and beyond, who are now sharing Little House with their children and grandchildren, in some cases, great-grandchildren. And there's something so beautiful about that. You know, we go around the country meeting Prairie fans all the time. I've gone to book signings and had three and four generations, it makes me feel incredibly old, <laughs> of, uh, you know, uh, coming up and, you know, talking about how much they've enjoyed watching it, watching it originally when it first aired, and then their daughter watching it later and uh, in reruns, and then their granddaughter with the DVDs. And it boggles my mind. Uh, how people come from all over the country, and, and we do mean a, a lot to them. The show means so much to them. I was at an autograph show, and a woman walked in. She, 40-something, so really, like, grown up with the show. She walked in, she saw all the other people signing autographs, she saw, like, the name plate, she looked at me in her eyes, and <gasps> this look of horrified recognition. She did not say hello. She did not say good morning. She did not say, are you her? Any of the normal things you start a conversation with. She looked at me, looked really angry, and then she said, I forgive you, and walked out. 
The appeal of Little House has also proven itself to be global, easily crossing international borders. Not only are these issues issues that are dealt with in our country, but they're dealt with in countries all over the world. So this show plays absolutely everywhere. In Ireland, I am told that when a girl is the school bully, she is simply referred to as the Nelly. I'll get even with her. See? This show is huge in Japan, crazy in France. I'm very popular in France. Um, I say it's a cultural difference. It's that they don't think Nellie Olson's mean. They, they think she's French. And trigger girls. So the show is huge in France. Reruns and reruns all the time. <laughs> Just a few months ago, there was a survey on French television. They were asking people, when you were a child, what was your dream house? Where did you want to live? And one person out of three answered Little House on the Prairie. It, it came first in the survey. The very first thing that most children draw a picture of is a little house with a pa, a ma, and children. This is not American, French, or anything. This is universal. The universal appeal of Little House on the Prairie began with Laura Ingalls Wilder and was carried into the future by the man who made it his mission to do justice to her stories. Laura Ingalls Wilder and Michael Landon were the greatest team to create entertainment for generations and generations and generations to come. I'm sure it will be available on every delivery system imaginable ad infinitum. If Michael knew that we were here doing this today, talking about Little House, I think he would be smiling and laughing and just so kind of blown away that 40 years later, it's still a popular show. The technology may change, but the essential human truth that's in the shows, as well as in Laura's books, doesn't change. Little House radiates genuine goodness, decency, honesty, truth about the human condition and we are part of this shared experience for generations of readers and viewers who are grateful for the opportunity they have through television and through books to step in to Laura's land of long ago where life is simple that's going to go on as long as people are looking for a message that's positive ah! I'm right here Donna and because the problems of the Ingalls are the problems of the entire world and people can identify with the characters, it hasn't changed. For many of those who helped bring Little House to television, the experience was life-changing. We feel very blessed that we were a part of something that does go on and on and on. We, as a group, had done exactly what we had set out to do, was to be on television at the top of the charts for almost 10 straight years, and thinking about how fortunate we all were to have been connected with Michael Landon for all these years, and look how, what we were and how successful we all were within ourselves. Those of us who were involved in it will always be involved in it. It is a part of our lives that is central to our life experience and to our creative experience. To this day, I do not walk on a soundstage without thinking about Michael. If I'm directing and I say action or I say cut, I hear Michael say action and say cut. I cannot count the amount of times that uh, people have come up to me when they find out that my father's Michael Landon to let me know how deeply affected and appreciative they are of his work. He touched people's hearts. People grew up watching Little House. Uh, I think that if you turn TV on, you'll still see Little House on the Prairie. It's a show that, um, because of its good, great family values, that people love to watch, and uh, there's just such great messages there. When I meet fans of Little House, some people told me that they had very difficult childhoods, abused children, and they told me Little House on the Prairie kept them alive because they thought what I'm going through is not normal. This is what it should be. And I want to survive, and I want to create that with my own family. 
people will come up to me and say, don't you hate when people tell you how much they love Little House? And I say, why, why would I, why would I hate people telling me that they love something that I love so much? Thank you, thank you, thank you.